Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to have a look at the new features in Pop OS 2004 Beta, and I may have found a little, little bit of a bug here. It's somewhat related in a way to the Ubuntu, uh, the Ubuntu Snap Store. Now, I was finally provided, and on that video, I have it as the pinned comment down below, a copy of the bug report. It was sent to me, and so we had a look at that. And what they're saying in Ubuntu is that yes, the Snap Store is supposed to have the ability to do apt and snap packages all from that, but that's not working. Some people have said they have seen it working. I've tested both updating my beta and I've tested a daily build. I've not seen that yet, but we are gonna keep an eye on that. As long as that functionality comes back, hey, I will have no problem saying, hey, sure, check out Ubuntu again. Uh, so, but we find something because Pop is implementing something similar. Of course, Pop OS is also like Linux Mint, not into snaps. But what they have done is they have integrated flat packs. And so now by default in the new Pop OS 2004, flat pack support is built into the no uh, into the uh, Pop OS shop. And so we're seeing that. Now the bug that I seem to have found is that some, not all packages, but some of them seem to be missing when I know that there is going to be a curated version. We're gonna poke around at that, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but otherwise, let's go ahead and have a look at their change logs and um, their testing information. So the first major thing that I think some of you will, you're either going to really love it or you're going to not like it, but it's okay because it's totally optional, is they will actually have a new, um, they will actually have a new feature for converting it into a tiled window manager. And they have very nice options and setups and things like that there to be able to spot what you are, uh, what you're able to do. So they give you basically the list of the shortcuts so you can get used to it. We're gonna have a look at that. So they have the pop shell tiling is what that is. They have the instructions to activate it. It's simply an icon at the upper right hand side of the screen. They have the information over here. And then the other thing they're saying is that they have flat pack support with Flathub. So you can actually go into the software repositories and add other other flat pack repositories if you want. That is an option that is inside of there. The source applications, uh, it says the source applications is visible when viewing the application defaults. So right next to the install button, there is a button where you can pull down. Now I found in some cases that, and this is what I think could be a bug, in some cases where I know there's a curated version, it's only showing me the flat pack version. Uh, GIMP, I think GIMP was one of those those uh, items as well. And some of them I found that they had correctly the apt and the flat pack. Now they do say uh, down here, use the flat hat versions of applications, not in the Pop OS repository. We're very interested in countering a few, uh, if you encounter errors. And this is what I poked around at some of the applications that I typically install just to see which versions are available. So basically they're saying they want you to use the curated versions first and then use the flat pack versions from when they're not. This is the opposite direction that Ubuntu is taking with Snap where they want you on Snap first and then curated outside. That's one of the things and the issues and the challenges that I happen to be having. Now the installation setup is going to be the same, so we're not gonna walk through that. It is a basic OEM installer. You have the option to download the uh, AMD Intel or the NVIDIA versions on the download. And the theming is a dark theming, I think. Uh, and I think the other one was a light theming, if I remember correctly. Uh, but what we're gonna do is uh, I installed this and I have not run it quite yet. So we're gonna let this guy boot up and uh, we'll see what it's going to look like. Uh, not a lot of overall changes. I thought the theming had changed because it wasn't nearly as obnoxious to look at as the previous version, but it just turns out, I, I booted up the two of them side by side, and it actually turns out they're very equivalent. They have calmed down the buttons a little bit. It's not quite as bright which is much nicer, uh, and the wallpaper also is not quite as bright. So overall, this is your basic setup. So we've installed it, so now we're doing the first boot. So all this is the same, except I do not recall the appearance sections. You can choose between the light or the dark on startup now. So I believe that is a new feature to this. 
So uh, I do not like that they have location on, but you can toggle it off. That's something Ubuntu does better where it's off, but you can toggle it on. Pop OS, get with the program. <laughs> all right. So here is your uh, time zoning. So that's all good. And then we're just going to go ahead and skip our accounts. But we do have Google, Nextcloud, <sighs> Facebook, Microsoft. Oh, Lord. Uh, Flickr, Foursquare, Microsoft Exchange, IMAP, SMTP, and Enterprise Logins. We're going to skip all those for now. Go ahead and enter in our username of Pop OS and enter my super secret password. That is definitely not one, two, and three. All right, so now we are all done and we are ready to use Pop for the first time. Okay, so when we get in here and uh, what we're going to see is going to be much the same. So going over the things that are, are uh, going to be a, a little bit this, uh, different are obviously the GNOME version is, I think it's 3.36, whatever the latest GNOME happens to be. So we'll head on down to the About system, and we have GNOME version 3.36.1. All right, so that does give us all of the different features and options of the latest GNOME. Of course, we still do have the firmware options here as well, which is something that Pop! OS puts in to allow you to do better, uh, better control of latest hardware. Not sure why it's failing to check for updates. All right, so the first thing is um, everything else is going to be pretty much the same. We have a fairly minimal install. We have basically our office, no utilities, not much of anything else. So the first thing we'll have we will have a look at though is um, the Tyler. So it's up here in the upper corner of the button. You pull it down and you have the option to turn this guy on. This is going to toggle it. We have our basic shortcut here. Navigation, super, and the arrow keys. Launcher is the super and the slash key. And we can hit our uh, view all option here, which is going to show us all of the different shortcut keys. So you can actually do that. So let's go ahead and turn this guy on and see what it looks like. So I'll go ahead and hit my, my uh, key there. And if I want to boot up a terminal, and then maybe I want to boot up like Firefox next to it so it's going to give us and that was it'll load up in a second here let's go ahead and boot up something else while we're at it oh, there we go okay so you can just grab this guy here and then now with my arrow keys i can navigate back and forth between them so i can start up something else and let's just go with uh files you see what it's going to do? It's going to automatically tile everything down. So if you're used to window tiling window managers or want something, a feature like this, you now have this option inside of the system. Of course, I went into the GNOME systems. If you just toggle this guy back off, it's going to turn everything back into your basic floating windows. So that's our one major feature that they're looking at. Overall, I think it's pretty cool. If you want to get used to window uh, tiling window managers, I think that that's actually a, a really good place to start because you still have the comfort of the full desktop environment. You can toggle it on, experiment with it, and then probably get comfortable with some of the other window managers that are out there. And so that's actually a cool feature. Now let's go ahead and have a look at the Pop Shop and let's see if we can identify the things that I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and start by having a look at what is installed. We have LibreOffice is installed by default in the system. All right, so let's just go ahead and have a look at what LibreOffice is going to look like. I did find that the search function's not particularly good. All right, so when we go into here and we look at LibreOffice, we can see that some of these guys are already installed. These are the dev versions of the software. So if we scroll on down, uh, there it is. So this is what the drop is gonna look like. So we have in this case open because it's already installed. We have the uninstall because it's installed. Right next to it is gonna be a source package. So some things like the LibreOffice are going to have the option here to pull it down. Now in this case, we only have the single option, but we already have LibreOffice installed through the dev packages. So that's not gonna clearly show us what we want to look at. Let's have a look at evolution. So evolution is one that I use for my business email. With this one here, you can see it kind of defaults to the flat pack, but we can go down and we can pull down the dev. So we can install either one of these that we happen to want just by pulling down this Dropbox option. Now I can find other things like, for example, if 
did my thing freeze on me? It looks like my thing froze on me. Did not want to let me out of there. I was like, let me out. I looked at things like GIMP. And GIMP is certainly one that I use a lot. This guy here, we only have the flat pack option, but I know for a fact that we do have a curated version because if I come in here and do a sudo apt install GIMP, we are very clearly getting the deb version of this installed. So let me go ahead and close this guy down. I want to wait for this guy to finish uh, finish its installation. And so this is what they want you to use, the curated deb packages first and use the flat packs as the secondary. But that was the challenge that I had is that there's going to be a few applications in here that um, a few applications in here that do not seem to have the Ubuntu versions in there. So you can see that GIMP still doesn't even show up even though I have it installed, but I still have the option to install my Flatpak version. That's the little bug that I think I'm talking about. And I did try GNU Image Manipulator Program as well because that's actually how Linux Mint does it. So apparently of all of the uh, of all of these systems trying to use these, Linux Mint still is the one that does it right. It has app packages, it has flat packs, and it tells you which one happens to be which. I do like their approach though of, of having a single application in there and pulling down the application. So here's Caden Live. In theory, we should have a curated and a flat pack, and we do. So that's good. Let's have a look at Thunderbird. Uh, bird tray. We have Thunderbird. Here we have the Deb and then the flat pack. So it looks like most of them are working. So the issue could be GIMP. Obviously, I did not do a look at everything. I just happened to notice this on a few of the applications that I use on a regular basis, and there's not a flat pack for Simple Screen Recorder. So that could be something to look into, so I encourage you guys to look at all the various software that you use on a regular basis and report back to the team to see if there's anything else that is missing. So there's a flat pack version of Kodi. There's a dev version of Kodi. So in this case, we have both different versions I believe it's going to be the same application. Wait, what's this one? Let's check my versions. This is 18.5. This is going to be 18.5. Okay, so in this case, we have both of them here. It's just they're not lumped over. So we're getting just a little bit, uh, a little bit of inconsistency uh, with some of the applications. That's really the only issue that I seem to find. It just appears as though a few things are missing. Um, it's not, by the way, the fact that the system hasn't been updated. I did update it yesterday. I just wanted to show you guys that. So overall, that's really what's different in Pop! OS. It's uh, very good. I will continue to recommend this. This does appear to be a very small bug in the Pop! Store, where some applications are not showing us the curated versions. Some of them are uh, some of them are having the single application with the, the dual dropdown, and some of them are listing the application twice. That should probably get cleaned up a little bit, but uh, is that enough to say don't use it? Absolutely not. Um, Pop! OS remains being a very excellent distribution, and uh, that is uh, that is pretty much all they have changed. Not a lot different. Um, I do really like their their new uh, their new wallpapers. It does look like they may have changed just a little bit of the theming, lighten it up just a little bit, which is really good. And uh, overall, I look forward to having a look at this one that definitely looks like a good and compelling distribution. So thanks for coming along. Uh, give me some, uh, some thoughts in the comments down below, and we will catch you next time.